Hello, this is Biology Senior 4, Unit 2, Introduction to Classification. You are together with me, Teacher Ephraim Hunzaro. What are the objectives of the lesson? First of all, you have key unit competence. Apply the basic knowledge of classification to group living organisms into the three domains. The learning objectives are the following. Describe bacterial diseases in animals and the plants. Explain why viruses are not included in the three domain of classification. Outline how viruses are classified, limited to the type of nucleic acid and their host. Lastly, to construct a dichotomous key for a group of organisms. Let's start with common bacterial diseases in humans. Remember that we talk about humans in biology, we can include uh, or we can use the animal term, animals, because humans are included in it. Uh, humans are included in animals. We have differing diseases, cholera, caused by Vibidon cholera, mode of transmission, contaminated food and drinks. Uh, what is waterborne, spread by vectors such as house flies from human feces. What are the signs and symptoms? When you have cholera, uh, you have diarrhea, dehydration, and vomiting. How can you prevent cholera disease? You wash your hands before and after meals, drink clean water, proper disposal of household waste and fecal matters. The other disease of bacteria is Tyson tree, which is called by Shigella bacterium. Mode of transmission is waterborne. The symptoms and the sick signs include diarrhea and abdominal cramps. The prevention and the control uh, methods we should wash your hands before and after meals, drink clean water, proper disposal of household waste and fecal matters. The other bacterial disease is typhoid fever, caused by salmonella typhi. Mode of transmission is waterborne and the contaminated food. The symptoms and signs include the headache, insomnia, fatigue, continuous fever sometimes. Control, you wash your hands before and after meals. Drink clean propose of household waste and fecal matter. Another disease caused by that bacteria is meningitis. Caused by three forms bacterial fungal and viral meningitis uh, transmitted through the air from the sick person to healthy person through coughing and sneezing. High fever, loss of appetite, strong headache, stiff neck, nausea and vomiting, confusion and conversion, these are the signs and symptoms of the meningitis disease. Uh, it is eradicated by vaccination. The following now are bacterial diseases found in plants. We find common scab caused by streptomyces scabies. Signs and symptoms scabs or patches on surface of potato tubers. Another disease is a bacterial blight of coffee caused by Pseudomonas sp, signs and symptoms, dark swellings or regions, and scorching of ribs. Name of disease is black rot of cotton, caused by Thialaviopsis bascola, signs and symptoms, rotting of the whole plant. 
Another disease is the blight of beans, Santomonas compestris, signs and symptoms, scorching of leaves. Now we are ending bacteria and diseases caused by bacteria. We can now look at viruses, structure and classification of viruses. Viruses are a cellular and lack cellular structure. They have none of the features that we traditionally use for classification. They are particles made of proteins and nucleic acids that are found in all cellular organisms, but show metabolism only once inside the host cell. When they infect cells, they use biochemical machinery and proteins of the host cell to copy their nucleic acids and to make protein codes, often leading to destruction of the host cells. The energy for these processes is provided by ATP from the host cell. The following is the structure of the virus. Viruses can be heroico, icosahedro, and complex. Let us see characteristics of viruses. They do not consist of cells. They lack cell membranes, cytoplasms, ribosomes, and other cell organelles. They are unable to make proteins or even reproduce on their own. They must depend on a host cell to synthesize their proteins and to make copies of themselves. Viruses infect and live inside the cells of living organisms. They are regarded as parasites since they depend entirely on living cells for survival. Although viruses are not classified as living things, they share two important traits with living things. They have genetic material and they can evolve. My dear friends, you see that characteristic of viruses are far different from characteristics of bacteria and other living organisms. We know that all living organisms are made of cells. For viruses, no cells. That's why we call them as cellular. We know that cells of living organisms are having what we call cell organelles. For viruses, no cell organelles. We know that all living organisms are able to make proteins. For viruses, it is not possible. They are unable to make proteins or even reproduce on their own. That's why viruses entirely depend on the host to synthesize their proteins and make copies of themselves. And that is why they only live inside the hosts. They can't live outside the host. Now, let us go into dichotomous key of identification of organisms. You know that we are in this unit called classification. When we classify living organisms, we base ourselves on the physical features that are looking uh, outside, that you look at uh, those structures. Uh, when you look at them, we are now able to classify the living organisms. The dichotomous key is also referred to as biological identification key. It is made up of a series of contrasting statements called leads, indicated by numbers 1, 2, 3, each C, where each lead deals with a particular observable characteristic. The characteristics used in the keys should be readily observable morphological features, which may be either qualitative, such as shape of abdomen, nature of legs, or quantitative, such as number of antennae, number of pairs of legs, and length of the antennae in the case of arthropods. 
The following are guidelines used in the construction of a dichotomous key. Use morphological characteristics which are observable as much as possible, such as rivenation, nature of margin, apex, la minor, and natural length of the petiole or leaf stroke. We start with a major characteristic that divide the organism or the specimen into two large groups, such as the type of a reef. You select a single characteristic at a time and identify it using a number of examples. Uh, for example, simple reef, go to number two, compound reef, go to number five. This means that in two, we deal with only simple leaves and the five only compound leaves. Use similar forms of words for two contrasting statements. For example, at E2, this is reef with the parallel venation. Go to G and reef with the network of venation. Go to three. The first statement should always be positive. Avoid the generalizations or overlapping variations. Be specific and precise to the point. Let's look at the examples of a dichotomous scheme. Uh, the example is the following. Collect leaves from the following plants, cassava, avocado, jacaranda, cassia, hibiscus bean, maize or pasparum grass. Rebel different leaves corrected as A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Here, you should associate the letters with the plants. Cassava A, avocado B, jacaranda C, cassia D, hibiscus E, bean F, Maize or pass paramugras G. Observe and familiarize with the specimens before starting the experiment to minimize errors during the identification process. Make a table summarizing the specimens and the steps forward to identify each of them. Then you construct a dichotomous key based on the observable features or characteristics and the table of steps forward. Here, it is the solution of our example. Remember we have cassava, avocado, jacaranda, cassia, hibiscus bean, maize or pasparum grass. Here, we state Number one, A and B. It means on the first test, first stage step, we have uh, two uh, features, one opposing another. That's why you have two, st two statements, A and B on one. When you talk about simple reefs, you define them on number two. When you oppose simple reefs, the opposed will be compound reefs. Where are they found? They are found on five. Statement number two it is parallel venation with the opposite, which is the network of venation, and you find the presses where each is located. When you go to the statement number three, you find simple digitate opposed to non-simple digitate. When you go to statements number four, you find leaf with serrated margin opposed to leaf with smooth margin. When you go to statement number five, find reef with the three reef rates 
compound trifori trifoliate opposed to ribs with more than three leaflets. Statement number six, we have pinnate reef opposed to bipinnate reef. As you see, we have two statements, one opposing another or two statements opposing each other. When one is affirmative, another will be negative. It is, this is the process of dichotomasky. If you go into an example related to men, we can find a tall man. Another statement will be a short man. Number two, if he is a black man, another statement will be a brown man. Then at the end of each statement, you find the dash, 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 dash points ended by the letter or number. This letter or number indicates the place at which you find the organism with the stated characteristics. All of these are used in the classification of living organisms. This can be having application in the museums and in the botanical gardens or in any other places which are concerned with conservation of species. What are common features used for identification of animals? Animals are classified based on the following features. We have locomotor structures such as legs, wings, and fins. Antenna, this is presence, nature, and number. Presence or absence of eye and eye type. Number of body parts. For example, insects have three body parts. We have body segments, number and nature. We have body surface structures such as fur, hair, feathers, and scales. You have feeding structures such as mouth parts in arthropods, for example, in insects. We have type of skeleton present such as endoskeleton, exoskeleton, and hydrostatic. Common features used for identification of plants. Plants can be classified based on the following features. The reef structure such as nature of apex, margin, venation, lamina, and the petiole. The flower structure, including inflorescence type, flower shape, and a number of flower parts. The type of stem, woody, flesh, and the herbaceous. Shape, rectangular, cylindrical, and the texture of the stem that is smooth, spiny, and thorny, etc. The type of root system, tap root, storage root, fibrous roots. We should avoiding some things and we are going to take precautions when we are dealing with dichotomous key. Care must be taken while collecting and handling some organisms because some are poisonous, have stones, and the others are able to sting. Collection of specimen should be done a day or a few days before the experiment, depending on nature of the experiment. Avoid and try to minimize, where possible, uprooting, cutting down, or plucking and pruning of plants as this may threaten biodiversity as well as result into environmental degradation.
our unity today was to complete the introduction to classification because we are we started this topic on last time today we are to go on with the remainders of the unit we have seen bacterial diseases both in animals and the plants after which you have seen dichotomous key used in the classification of living organisms now we can go on with exercises of what you have covered today to check whether we understand them read and interpret the dichotomous tree below and use it to answer the following questions we have here arthropods remember that arthropods is the forum in which you find the insects they have three pairs of legs uh, remember that dichotomous key is there with the opposing or self-opposing features if we start with three pairs of legs, another statement with the more or less than three pairs of legs. Those three pairs of legs, we have winged and wingless. Uh, among winged, we have with pollen sacs and without pollen sac. With pollen sacs, we have hand B. Without pollen sacs, we have called antenna butterflies. We have straight antenna, example of mosquito. While wingless, we find black ants. Among more than three pairs of legs, you have four pairs of legs. Uh, example spider, found on number six. Blackets indicate number of places at which the, the, the organisms are found. We have cylindrical body shape, millipede six, flattened body shape, for example, centipede at seven. Uh, questions are the following. Specify the phylum of the kingdom Animaria represented by the above the ecotomous tree and give one observable reason to support your answer. You find that the phylum of kingdom animaria represented here is arthropods, and the observable reason is that all members, organisms of the phylum arthropods have legs, three pairs of legs, and also they have wings. These are observable reason. According to this dichotomous tree, which characteristic feature was used to classify different insects? Different insects were classified according to the three pairs of legs. Because on this statement number one, three pairs of legs, winged and wingless. This is where you find honeybee, butterfly, mosquitoes. These are having wings. Uh, which observable characteristic feature distinguishes between a spider and a mosquito? You find a mosquito here and you find a spider there. A uh, mosquito, first of all, mosquitoes have wings. Why? Uh, mosquitoes have wings. Uh, while spiders uh, have. Uh, uh, sorry, okay. No, mosquitoes have three pairs of legs as an insect. 
while spiders have more than three pairs of legs. Spiders have four pairs of legs instead of three pairs of legs. How does a millipede differ from a centipede? You find it there down. Millipedes have a strangely cobalt shape, while centipedes have flattened body shape. To which classes do a millipede, millipede and centipede belong? To which classes? They all are found in classes of more than three pairs of legs. These are not the all insects, of course, because insects is an, an, a class. Uh, there is another question. Uh, it is number two, not number one. Which of the following living organisms belongs to domain bacteria? Which one of the following living organisms belongs to domain bacteria? Eugrena, Vibrio cholerae, Paramecium, and molds. You find it that. Number B is the one which is of bacteria, Vibrio cholerae. Number two, the group of classification where organisms resemble one another and are capable of interbreeding together to produce viable springs is known as species, kingdom, genus, phylum. We find that answer is A species, which is uh, entering organisms resembling to one another and capable of interbreeding together, produce viable offspring. Number three, which one of the following is not a kingdom of living organisms? Monera, Animaria, Anerida, Protoctista. As you see, Anerida is not a kingdom of living organisms. Which one of the following is a characteristic feature common to fish, reptiles, and birds, but absent in mammals? Possession of scales, has no limbs, possession of feathers, undergo internal fertilization. The one which is not found in mammals here. Which one of the wings is a characteristic feature common to fish. Fish have scales, uh, reptiles and birds, but common only absent in mammals. This is possession of scales. Which one of the following statements about fish is not correct? Fish live both in water and on land and undergo external fertilization. Most fish have bones while others are cartilaginous. Most fish have streamlined body, lateral and swim bladder. Gills are organs for gaseous exchange in fish. Find that number A is the one because fish cannot live in the water and on land at the same time. Number six, which one of the following is not a characteristic of all insects? Number A, they have three body parts, namely head, thorax, and abdomen. This is the definition of insects. They have three pairs of jointed legs attached on the segment of the thorax. They have four pairs of jointed legs. They have a pair of antennae attached 
on the head, you find that the answer is C. They have four pairs of jointed legs. Number seven, the following are characteristics of all mammals, except they have mammal glands to secrete milk, feed their young ones. This is correct. Their skin is covered with the hair. This is correct. They undergo internal fertilization and internal development of the embryo. They have a pair of wings made up of feeders. Number D is the answer. All of the above are of mammals, except that they don't have a pair of wings made up of feeders. Number eight, the point where the reef joins the stem is called apex, margin, reef base, lamina, length of petiole. The point where the leaf joins the stem is called length of petiole number E. Which of the following is less considered? Which of the following is less considered while identifying feature to construct a dichotomous key of ribs? Nature of margin nature of apex, size and the color of the leaf. The less considered while identifying feature to contract the dichotomous key of the leaves is the size and the color of the leaf. The following are characteristics of arachnids except four pairs of jointed legs, Two body parts, three body parts do not have wings. The answer is a three. C, three body parts. Match the structures with the organisms which possess them. Antennae is hard by house fly. Flagella is found in, let's annotate. Let's annotate so that we can see. Antenna is of house fry. Flagella, Can it be of a paramecium? Spores. Oh no, no. It's that Steopodia of Amoeba. So I want to cream of Flagella. A greener called the snake. Uh, we went to, don't worry. Antenna, fungus of spores, Sauria, Sparomatium. Yeah, this is the correct matching. Because antenna are had by insects. House fry is an insect. Fragera, yeah, it's by Ugrina. Uh, spores, fungus, or the shell snails, pseudopodia, moeba, 
Sauria paramecia. Okay. Uh, today, we objective was to end our unit of introduction to classification. Last time, we started with kingdoms and phylums, and you have seen that all living organisms are classified into the taxonomic hierarchy. Uh, today, we have seen bacteria, and we have seen bacterial diseases in plants and animals, after which you have seen dichotomous key, which is used in the classification of living organisms according to the observable features. And we have now done these exercises to make sure that you understand what you have covered today. Now I can say that we are towards the end of the presentation today, but as I'm seeing, I have some students who attended. I want to make sure that they captured everything, some of whom were late, but I think they have some captured something. Even though if you have some questions, I have reserved you some minutes uh, so that I can help you in getting clear of what is not clear. Thank you very much. The fault is yours. I see the Saba Eve, Nitanga Tomokun Serin, and Shami Chris. I want to hear from you. Thank you. You unmute yourself, and I'm waiting for you. Unmute yourself, please. Teacher, hi. Hi, hi. Okay, so I'm saying. Yes. Uh, well, I can say that the topic is clear and I have no problem. Everything is clear. For me, I have no problem. Okay, thank you, Serene. If. Me also, I don't have no problem. Okay, thank you. Show me quick. Can I trust you? Okay. And I, I want to communicate this. Uh, as you are announced before ARIA that you have the class on this day, on this time, Make sure that when time comes, I am there and I immediately start. I'm going to be okay. following my time to be around the clock when you come and meet me there teaching. Worry not, enter the class and go with me. I also call upon you to go on inviting your friends and colleagues. Yeah, wh when did you meet? Uh, there is a calendar of our lessons. We have uh, one on Wednesday. We have another on Friday. We have another on Saturday. But uh, Wednesday and Saturday, it is for a revo. Friday it is for a revo. On Wednesday, uh, it is tomorrow. I wanted to make it today on Tuesday because tomorrow I'm not there. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow there is no session. I will speak to on this day. And make sure that when it is Wednesday, it is afternoon 3 p.m. And when you are in Oriver Friday, it is before noon at 10. Saturday, it is before noon at 10 a.m. You understand that? We have only one time of afternoon, that is Wednesday. 
Yeah. And I call upon you not to be bothered by the level or the class of viewers in which you study. If you are all level, the same num class one, class two, or near three, the same you can attend whichever form you are in. When it is a level, you can also attend whichever form, whichever class, near four, near five, near six. No problem, it is about revision and helping you to revise something about your contents of the class at the school. Otherwise, okay. I can say that I thank you very much for your kind attention and the participation. Let's see one another on Friday morning at 10 a.m. Thank you very much. Oh, genius!